gloves. Oh, well, I realize that I have to work, I have to do things. Uh, today is a creative day. Uh, there's lots of snow. Uh, it's a great backdrop for a video. So let's start that again. I'm going to tell you perhaps the most important story. Um, and I will probably retape this a number of times. This is like take one. Um, it began with meeting Mother Teresa in Atlanta, June 15th, 1995, at Hartsfield Airport. She came right up to me through all the other people, took my hands, held them up to her heart, and looked deeply into my soul. And I heard her say, come and see. And I accepted that invitation. Two months later, I was on a plane to India, headed for Bangalore first, and then followed by Calcutta. I was in a really bad place in my life at this time for uh, personal reasons, which I will not go into at this time. But suffice to say, I'd lost my first husband to cancer. I was not in a good relationship with the second man who would be my husband. And I went to the airport with loaded with equipment, cameras, a visa, six-month visa, and I had no idea when I would return. I was planning to probably return to Atlanta in about four months. That was the idea. So, and I had no idea what I was going to expect once I got to India. I was on the flight to Frankfurt. I was flying Lufthansa and I couldn't sleep. I was in a state of high anxiety. Uh, got to Frankfurt Airport, got into several arguments. Ooh, so died. So here we go again. Um, and one of the sales clerks, I was at the table uh, looking for some cream, and she pulled down these uh, creams from the shelf, and uh, I was looking them over to bring a face cream to India with me. And then within a, a minute, she started putting all the creams back on the shelf, and I said to her, why are you putting the creams back on the shelf? I haven't uh, chosen one yet. And she said, Joy, you're taking too long. And I said, ah, spoken just like a German. Anyway, not very nice. But, and there was a couple little minor other incidents. So when I got on the plane from Frankfurt to Bombay, I didn't have my airline ticket for Bangalore, which I was, I had to pick up on the domestic flight. And um, I was very tired. I had two empty seats next to me. And I thought, oh yes, oh yes, this, uh, I'm going to be able to rest. Um, as you might tell by now, I often rest on airplanes. And just as the plane is about to take off, this man comes and sits next to me. And of course, he was a small man with gray hair and twinkling eyes and a little gray silver beard and very well dressed in a pair of designer blue jeans and a blue blazer. And I sat there and I thought, oh shit. You know, uh, he's going to be sitting there, which means I won't have the three seats to sleep on. And before the plane even took off, as we were going down the runway, without looking at me, he said, you had a very difficult week last week. And I looked at him and I said, I had a difficult year. He said, it was very hot where you were, very hot. Mm -hmm. He said, your father nearly died. It could have been yes, could have been no, could have been yes, could have been no. And now I'm looking at him like, what? And he said, yes, your father's heart, but your prayer saved him. And I'm like, what? Because I nearly didn't leave Atlanta because of my fa father's heart failure condition, and he had been hospitalized and nearly did die. And I remember that day, I didn't pray very often, but that day I really did pray to God to save his life. And um, then he said to me, don't worry, your father will be there when you get back in six months. And I looked at him and I said, ah, I'm not planning to be in India for six months, I'm going to be there for four months. He says, no, it will be closer to six. 
Well, let me tell you, this conversation went on for about three hours. He told me everything about my past, about my present, and things that would happen in the future. He told me about Ron and that he was fine and not to worry about him anymore. And I said, ah, I'm just giving you pieces of our three-hour dialogue, which I did write down in a journal, which I have not written about extensively in my book at all, because people would think it's strange. And um, I said, I'm going to test you. What was his name? And he said, oh. His first name started with R, his second name started with C, and his name was Ron Campbell. And then he went on to say, oh, you have empty, a hole in your heart, a hole, missing place in your heart, but don't worry, it will be soon filled with the birth of your child. And at this point I'm really shocked, and I said, no, no, not possible, I can't have a child. And he said, yes, very soon, very soon. Well, within less than five months, I was pregnant with Paul because George came to India and I got pregnant on my birthday, essentially. Well, actually it was Christmas. It was my Christmas present. And then I returned to Atlanta January 96. Went to India August, middle of August, returned January. And... Um, so this dialogue continued, and he told me about the men in my life and what to expect in the future, which I will never divulge at this point. But he, he told me about my personality. He told me that I was to embark on a very important journey and that I should never, ever stop it, and I should never, ever give up. And he said, sometimes you've embarked on these projects before, and then you stopped, and that's your own insecurity. But this one, you must never stop. And in between our talks, he would tell me about people uh, on the plane and what they were going through. He told me about the flight attendants. And he said to me, sometimes you get a little bit, uh, you know, angry. He said, but I know you have very good heart, very good heart. And he smiled at this other person. And he said, but you must always be sweet like me. You see, they bring me chocolates. And the flight attendants were bringing him Swiss chocolates and hovering around him all the time on our flight. And at different times, we went to different parts of the plane. I don't know exactly how that happened, other than at one point, he was sitting in the back of the plane and called me back so I could have a cigarette. I was still smoking, and I sat next to him smoking. It was really funny. And then I asked him, what do you do? What do you do? After a while, when you're speaking to an Indian, you start speaking like an Indian. I said, what do you uh, do for a living? He said, oh, I'm in the fashion business. Well, he certainly looked like he was in the fashion business. And I said, what company do you work for? Ah, uh, yes, I work for company A to Z. A to Z. Oh, okay. Well, he gave me the name of his company. I wrote it down. And when I got to Bangalore, uh, he told me he had offices in India. And when I tried calling the offices, they never existed. And he also um, told me not to worry about my flight to Bangalore, that it was already arranged, because I had not got my tickets. And when I actually went to the domestic airport in Bombay, um, my flight was arranged. My ticket was there, and I'd never purchased one. The, one of the last things he said to me, to make this sweet and short, I had always had this fear that I would have lung cancer because I smoked cigarettes. And he turned and looked at me and he said, Ah, one more thing. Don't worry. You will not have lung cancer. Namaste.